Never mind me while I'm stepping out my circumference. I feel the nerves trickling down. It's life humbling. My words start a stumbling, staggered on court of guard. This the life of a jigaboo introverted and scarred. Whoa, my mother been the melodies while they sing the choruses. Direct messages from slaves saying we need more of it. Paranoia in my state. I see envy at high rates. Now it's crop off the fate. Turn great, so I fly straight. Was gone for a minute. Now I'm back like an ex with big factors. I see you turn flat like an extinct, like some raptors. When I drop through prayer purposes and practice and patience, we move the green apart. They're saying life is a matter of mastering basics and mastering patience More time I get tired of waiting Maybe it's fake procrastinating The times are bad short It really had me sprung Like she got me doing things that I never do huh. You thought that we connected When in fact it was trauma bonding Just leave it up to me to break the rules Never corresponding My childhood filled with fence climbs And knee scrapes and bikes And kicking it by the street signs The older I get I'm trying to lessen any screen time The bounce back heavy I rock steady on climb This world's a fucking loop The news will pick and choose Whatever truth they want to give to you I cannot stomach my kit So I Poop. Oops, when life turns sweeter, the lemon mouths get louder. But I'm amplified with ghosts from God, like that boy Fowler. Working like I've got that point to prove. But truth be told, the proof is right in the pudding, no point to lose. Uh, 60 for the creps, yeah, I did that just because. She expected more, girl, you know I'm saving up. Left me on red, well, it was what it was. Never stress over them joints or in downs when times get rough, so I ghost. Long are the days when we was close, and when I see you, it's like two completely different type of goats. I approach the weekly fire dropping, which I'm feeding. Still, I don't expect to be the one your boy having. But still the songs get spun like bay blades and teacups My fun fair to those that ever really know me from jump So what's up, huh? I've been the one they all depended on like TJ Now their debt wilder than a fury knockout punch Leaving them straight stunned, it's hella fun, uh Good morning, good morning. I hope everyone is blessed, first and foremost. Let's let's start positively. I hope everybody is blessed. I hope everybody is well. Um, I hope besides the football, everyone had a good weekend. I know Arsenal, Liverpool fans, maybe not so much, but I hope in general everyone had a good week. And big up everybody who is inside the building. We're back with our early morning vibes. Uh, love to everybody who is in the building already, whether that be on Twitter, whether that be on YouTube or wherever it is you're, that you're watching from. Much appreciated. If you are over here on YouTube, please, please, please make sure you do just smash that like. Can't stress how much it does help us out. So let me get through everyone that's in the building. As I mentioned before, make sure you're smashing that like on entry. Uh, much love and good morning to all. Uh, big up, I love Klopp. Big up to yourself. Good morning. Hope you're well. Uh, big up, Lee Whiskid in the morning. Uh, hope you are blessed. Uh, big up, Psychedelic in the building. Big up, G. It's not over yet. CE will still have to go to Spurs and Arsenal could drop points somewhere else. It just means we have to win every game. Pretty sure we said that before. Crystal Palace, but pick up to yourself. Uh, big up Victor in the morning. Uh, this season is done and dusted. It's all over, unfortunately. We'll talk about that. Uh, big up Anfield Road and hey, G, hey to yourself. So, obviously, we already know why we're here. We can see it on the screen. You can see it in the caption. Wasteful Liverpool. Waste opportunity in title race. Um, funny, and then Arsenal go and do the exact same thing, you know, straight after us. But let me let me not let me not deter. You know what I mean. Let me let me not stray off the topic. Liverpool one nil against Palace Eze in the fourteenth minute of the game. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, am I surprised? Nah, not really. Because you know, we if you're looking at just the performance, forget about all the chances that we had, and we're going to look at we're going to look at that anyway. But forget the chances that Liverpool had in the game. If we just look at the performance of the team, 
can you realistically, everyone sitting here, everybody watching this, if you're watching this on the replay, comment as well. Are you surprised? Like, are, are we looking at this and, and are we saying, oh, you know what? That one just, you know, it kind of came out of the blue. Obviously, Liverpool at home, where, you know, we're, we're fantastic. You know, we have been for God knows how many in months, have a lost at home in terms of the Premier League in a very, very long time. So in terms of that, there's obviously that inevitability about Liverpool. And I think that's probably inevitability and un, and unsustainable. I think those have been the two kind of buzzwords with Liverpool this season. That's how I'll kind of um, sub, um, describe Liverpool this season, if I'm being totally honest, just because of the inevitability that we'll just go out and score like we have done, you know, all season. Regardless of the performance, we'll just go out, we'll score goals, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then the unsustainable, which is, I'm sorry, but I mean, you guys have watched my, you know, my my previews, my match reactions, any time I've jumped on anyone's content or, you know, anything like that. I mean, how many times have, have we got to literally sit here and say the same thing, literally the same thing? And yesterday's game was the same thing. Like, hence why I'm not that surprised that you ended up losing the game because the performance was crap. You know, we were, we were genuinely crap. Forget the, the missing chances is the missing chances that, you know, it is what it is with that one. And again, we'll talk about that, but it's the genuine performance. And I get it. People, are, you know, everybody's like, I don't care. We're last seven, eight game. Or no, when we were at 10 games, everyone's like, I don't care. I just want to get the W. And I hear that. I fully hear that because you're so close to the end. It doesn't matter how you cross the finish line. You are just more concerned that you do cross the finish line, especially in first. The problem is if you keep the performance levels like they've kind of been for the majority, not all of the season, not every single game, but for the majority, and I probably lay it about 70% of the season where the performance levels are not that good, but the inevitability kicks in because you've got Salah, because you've got Diaz, because you've got Gappo, because you've got Nunes, because you've got Jota, because you've got McAllister, because you've got Zabozalai, because you've got Trent, Van Dijk, Canate, Allison, you know, Robertson. You've got all of these players. So that, that inevitability will always kick in at some point in time. But then there will come a point where that stops. There will come this point in the season where I didn't know when it was going to kick in. I just had a feeling. I didn't want it to kick in. And to be fair, I did actually believe, you know what, maybe we, maybe we can surpass that. Maybe we can you know, just divert all of that, you know, where we don't even kick into that kind of gear where it's like, oh, you know what, maybe maybe this could just be Liverpool for the rest of the season. Maybe this can just be, you know, that that kind of thing where it's that kind of season. More for me, <laughs> to, to be honest with you. And again, by the way, this ain't me saying title race over or anything like that. Um, I didn't think we'd win it anyway, so I, I didn't think there was going to be a title race, um, to be honest with you. But this is just more just to look at, this has been happening. And I think that the fact that Many of you have kind of just closed your eyes to that in itself because we were winning games, because we were getting the three points. That's why, for me, it's not like a surprising thing. Whereas I feel like many of us are sitting here saying, oh, no, you know what? Like, how did that happen? And this, that and the third. And then all of a sudden, revisionism starts to kick in out of nowhere. All of a sudden, everyone's like, yeah, you know what? I saw this coming. Yeah, yeah I really did. You know, we're not really doing this. But previously, we were called the mentality monsters. That's what that's what we were calling ourselves, mentality monsters. Mentality monsters. Literally, mentality monsters. Is this like this? This is one of the reasons why we were calling ourselves mentality monsters. Liverpool have gone behind in twenty-one out of the thirty-two Premier League games this season. Like, it. it <laughs> I I don't even I don't even know or understand how to explain that. Like, how do you tell people that in 21 out of your 32 games, meaning only in 11 other games, in 11 other games of this, so in 11 games of the 32 that you've played this season, you have not gone behind. That's why we were calling ourselves the mentality monsters, right? That's why we were all sitting there saying, yeah, you know what, we're able to come back and blah, 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 blah. But at some point, that, that, that cannot be a theme for an entire season. Whether Liverpool go on to win the league or not, I don't think it's going to be. Obviously, it's not down to Liverpool. It's not in our hands. But, I mean, if we were to win the league from this point, and listen, you win the league, you deserve it in the end. But, Jesus Christ, Liverpool have been super lucky, in my opinion. In my opinion, super lucky. Super duper lucky. You cannot go into a title. Like, a title-winning season cannot be, and because I've never seen it before. 
a team go behind 21 times and we're going to sit here and call it mentality monster. Miss me with that. Miss me with that. That that's that that's more that's just shameful, bro. Obviously, don't care because who in the league? I get it. You know what I mean? Uh, they, they, they will come that shamelessness behind it, but I, I'm not trying to sit here and 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 you know act like that. That's something to be proud of. Like that's yeah. You we've gone behind in 21 games, but hey, you know what? We won the game and da, 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 da. like at some point there has to be a shift. Come on, 11 games in a season. I don't even know what the re- like the results were in those 11 games, by the way. I don't know if we won those games. I don't know if we drew. I don't even know. You know, I have no idea. I haven't even checked the stats. I just saw that. And I was like, 21 out of 32. I didn't think it was that high. But really and truly, I watch Liverpool every week. So I, I should have known it was going to be in and around them kind of numbers. Just didn't think it would be that high. That is extremely high. And at some point, if you continue along that kind of trajectory, at some point, it cannot just continue. Like, at some point, it has to falter. <clears throat> Unless you can continue getting lucky, it has to falter at some point. That can't be a theme for the whole season. So, obviously, Liverpool just only have themselves to blame why they found themselves in this position now, where they're not top of the league. We were top by, like, five points at one stage. can't even remember how far Manchester City were. I remember they went away um, for the Club World Cup. Um, yeah, went away for the Club World Cup. We were. God knows how many points someone would have to let me know. And then Arsenal were obviously behind us, but then they started messing up a little bit, you know, during December. And by the way, every team goes for a little bit of a blip. Totally understand that. I'm not trying to say you have to go buy a Leverkusen on, on everybody and just be flawless and never lose a game and, you know, this, that and the third. I ain't saying that. That's an anomaly in itself anyway um, kind of thing. So I, I get that. I'm just saying that if there's there's going to be patterns, you know, throughout a season and obviously right now, you know, we're here, you know, we're here. So, you know, it is, it is what it is. Like, like, like I said, I'm just not surprised. I'm not, obviously we'll talk about the game and we'll get into the game and everything, but just, this is just more of an overall, overall look at everything. Um, and big up everybody. I know some people have said, you know, the title's not, over. I, I'm not saying it's over, by the way. I'm definitely, Liverpool are in a title race. No, there's no two ways about it. I'm, I wouldn't, I'd be stupid to think otherwise. Of course they are. They're, they're only two points behind the, you know, top of the league. <clears throat> the only problem we've got is that team who is top. It's not Arsenal. You know, it's it's not a Tottenham, it's not a, a Chelsea or a Manchester United. It's probably the best team we've seen in the Premier League era. If not the top two teams we've ever seen in the Premier League era with top two managers we've ever seen in our lifetimes, or well, most of our lifetimes. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So that's where the difficulty obviously comes into it. But Liverpool are not out of it. I don't, I don't believe Liverpool are out of it at all. I, I still believe there's some type of twist and turns. Don't know where, I don't know how, but I do believe there's some type of twist and turns. But, you know, it, it's neither here nor there. Let me get into some of the comments, man. Again, big up everybody who is inside. Let me know your thoughts as well, in, in general, about the title race and stuff like that. Uh, big up social joins. Uh, looks like our coaches decided to let City win the league again. Uh, we can't keep blaming these players, man. Every time, final running, these coaches shit the bed. Uh, make poor choices, formation, selection. These coaches bottle it. I I feel like that's a bit unfair to just blame it all on the coaches, because as we will see in a moment, uh, when I bring up um, bring up the stats and stuff, it's the, the 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 coaches aren't missing the chances. They are technically coaching the team to wins. Do you get what I'm trying to? Or they're they're trying they're facilitating these wins. So I couldn't fully blame, you know, the 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 manager in that kind of regards. You know, I feel like that would be a little bit unfair. You can blame them if you want. And you listen, um, I, I've tried to lay off Klopp in a certain sense because at some point, one, yes, I, I, you can blame Klopp for certain things, tactical stuff and, you know, substitutions and maybe lineups and things like that. But it's difficult to do all of that when the team are having so many opportunities to actually just go and win games. So even if the performances are bad, where and that's where I blame Klopp because I'm like, bro, these performances, yeah, I need you to pattern up in a different way or wh- whatever, do something. But then at this, on the flip side, he's then allowing for the, the tactics to give Liverpool the opportunity to win so many of these games, whether it is by 1-0 or whatever, we can get into the dibby-dabby later, but just win the game. But unfortunately, recently, you know, we haven't done that. Uh, uh, Alain Nuss, uh, I don't believe uh, it's over. We have six chances. We need City to lose a game. 
it's not impossible. Yeah, and this is what I agree. I totally agree. Totally agree. Big up Stefano in the building. Liverpool playing like the Kardashians at the moment. All puns. <laughs> hey, cheeky, cheeky, cheeky. Uh, big up Angel in the building. Good morning to yourself. Uh, didn't Klopp learn from Palace away? Palace were compact and physical away and they overpowered Endo and Sabozola. This time, Hughes and Wharton dominated Maka and Endo 1,000%. Uh, 21 out of 32 is a stat you'd find in a team battling relegation. Exactly. That, that this is, and you know the difference between a team battling relegation and Liverpool. Liverpool have the quality, obviously. That so when we keep coming back in games, this is this is why this is why I did that video a long time ago about the it being sustainable or unsustainable. Ultimately, quality will tell. Obviously, and more often than not, quality is going to tell. Like I said, I listed all those all those players. The guy next to me, which way is it? That way. This way. That way. Van Dyke, of course. You got Van Dyke, Allison, Trent, Robertson, Gomez, Endo, Zabozalai, McAllister, Curtis Jones, Salah, uh, Nunez, Diaz, Gapo, Jota. Come on, bro. Of course, the quality is going to tell. Sheffield United and them man ain't got them kind of players. What, Brewster? One man? Like, what, Burnley doing up for loans for Fofana? And that? I don't think he's dead, by the way. I think Fofana's a calm player, but these are the kind of players that you're talking about. These are the kind of players that you're that you're on about. Luton, come on, like these guys don't have that kind of quality. So when the going does get tough, or just when the chips are down a little bit in moments in games where you just need that extra bit of quality, they don't have that. They create the opportunities though. We've seen with Burnley, seen with Sheffield United, seen with Luton. They do create the opportunities to potentially give them that kind of edge. But unfortunately, you just don't have the players, and that's fine. But Liverpool have got that. So when you're seeing stuff like this, you're like, 21 out of 32? Like, are you serious? Like, that can't be, like, really? I, again, I don't know what the what it would be for, like, a team like Arsenal or City. Again, I don't know. Theirs might be worse, for all I know. You get what I'm trying to say? So I don't want to I don't want to sit here and act like, oh, yeah, but theirs is only, but I don't really care about theirs anyway. I'm only focusing on Liverpool. I just want to know how are Liverpool, you know, trying to get better? What are Liverpool doing to get better? And at the moment, yeah, obviously we'll see. We'll see. Uh the her all GS footy manager saves. Hey, listen, man. This is crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's it's it's, it's actually so coincidental that it happens to be Crystal Palace that Liverpool lose to. Uh our right uh, Angel, our right side exposed again yesterday. That is the story of our season. I mean, that's been the story under clock, to be fair. So uh Alinus, uh, I believe we don't have players you can play under pressure anymore. We bought a lot of bench players from other teams. This is the result, but it's not over yet. Um, I hear it. Uh, social joins. Um, brother, uh, ain't losing the last six game. Pep has a, des has a desperate mode and he, activate it, or he activates it always near the end of run-ins. Look at the data over the years. How many games do City win in May? Now, I agree. This is, this is why it's so difficult when you do get to this point of the season. Uh, was five points per City had a game in hand. Okay, so let's say five points, segue to three. So let's say two points. Um, even though you're not guaranteed, but with City, let's say it's going to be two points. So fair enough, fair enough. Um, Stefano, right now Klopp is leaving as a big underachiever, considering the players he's had and how highly he's regarded. Yeah, like I said, man, we'll have that conversation come the end of the season. I'm going to... Keep tight lipped on that one. Uh, Angel, uh, come on. We've seen this movie before. We know how it ends. City treble incoming. Hollywood Rock, good morning, man. Uh, we failed in every Premier League title race. This is a psychological problem. We haven't won a genuine title race since 1986. I mean, yeah. I mean, in terms of title races, yeah. I mean, the one we did win, of course, we completely blew the competition out of the water um, and, and built up such a crazy lead that, you know, by the time COVID even hit, it didn't even matter. Uh, Victor, it's players and manager for me. Yeah, yeah. I, and this is this is something that I want people to understand. We can't. I'm not. You can't sit and look at just one individual. It's the collective, because last season when we were doing up, oh yeah, but it's the midfield. Oh, and it's this like we, it has to be both. Both are culpable for everything that goes wrong, and both are culpable when things go right. So you can't. It can't be either or in these kind of situations. I don't. I don't feel anywhere. I feel like it's going to be the collective more than anything. So yeah, uh, big up Stephen uh, in the building. Good morning to you. Uh, I just don't think we will win all of our games left. Yeah, I hear it. It's more, uh, Stefano. It's more believable that we win zero of the remaining six than win all. To be honest, the morale is so low now. 
Remember when we lost five home games in a row? You know, even on that, that that's the bit that confuses me is that I would have thought that the morale would be kind of high, especially prior to the Atalanta game. I would have thought that the team's morale would be high, you know, because we talk about, you know, Allison coming back, Trent coming back, you know, Jota coming back, you know, all of these players coming back. Like I thought, the way, obviously, again, this is just more narratives. The way the narrative was spinning, I thought it was like, yo, Liverpool going to just do that. Like, we're literally just going to sort in terms of the belief within the squad, you know, the manager, the players, the fans. But these last three results, so Manchester United, Atalanta, and now this, Liverpool haven't won in their last three games, and the performance levels have stunk in every single game. Yeah, 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 100%. And it's crazy. The performance levels have stunk in every game that we've played, but we've actually had chances to win the game with the amount of opportunities we've had. That's the crazy thing about all of this. Uh, Angel Naji, uh, the right side has been problematic all season and it hasn't been addressed. Klopp and coaches. But we said this last season. We were talking about this last season and we thought he addressed it with the midfield. Uh, big up Marco. Bro, these players letting Klopp go out weak. Yeah, yeah, I hear it. I hear it. I hear it. Hollywood, uh, Stefan, if we lost the remaining games, that's a top four scrap. Yeah, it would be slightly. Because Villa, after their shock victory yesterday, <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be... Liverpool don't want to be getting into a scrap for top four. No, 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 no. That's what we start fighting. Um, Ali, uh, we got two shocks in four days. Atalanta was a huge hit for us. Lost to Anfield versus the middle range team uh, in in that way is impossible for me. Yeah, in 100%. And these are the kind of things that I heard Gary Neville's podcast this morning and he was talking about Manchester City's fixtures next week. They got Real Madrid, obviously, in the Champions League. Then they've got the FA Cup on the weekend against Chelsea. It's those kind of weeks that you have. And those weeks either... You go into you end the week either in every competition or you end the week with inside no competition, and it's almost that's kind of Liverpool's week. Obviously, next week that might change because we may win Atalanta, and all of a sudden the outlook looks totally different. All of a sudden, because Manchester City are not playing, and I think we're playing next week. If we win that game, we go ahead, even though they will have a game in hand, you know. But I've seen that picture, I've seen that story before where City have a game in hand, and we just know what happens. They win the game in hand, they go back to top. And, you know, it is what it is. Uh, Alinus, imagine if we played against Real Madrid like we did versus Atalanta. They would beat us very badly. We were good. We are good against small teams. I mean, where would you class Crystal Palace? Where would you class Crystal Palace, man? But, listen, I'll get into the I'll get into the rest of the comments. Uh, and, again, big up everybody um, inside the big, uh, building. Big up Reverend Knight. Uh, big up G. Down to Klopp and players, I agree, as a collective. Now, nah, I agree, man. I agree. And there was probably only like one player I would say actually played, you know, relatively well. But look, this is how we kind of lined up looking towards the game. Uh, obviously, you know, Konate back or in there. Uh, Connor Bradley. Now Trent was obviously on the bench. Bradley, of course, coming off in the game. Uh, Robertson at left back. Uh, midfield, Endo, McAllister, Jones. And then up front, the front three that most people would say is our best front three, which is Diaz, Nunes and Mohamed. Salah. I think when we look at that, um, firstly, I, I don't know if you guys looked at that lineup and thought, nah, I'm not really happy with that one. I don't feel like he should play. There might be one or two players potentially within that, but I feel like the lineup was calm. Like when I looked at that, I said, he's not even thinking about Atalanta at this point in time anyway, because he's gone relatively strong with that lineup. Maybe you could have thrown in Sabozalai, but most people wanted Curtis Jones instead kind of thing. I know he's just come back from injury, but that was kind of the general consensus. I didn't feel like the lineup was too much of a problem, if I'm being totally honest. But, you know, whether you guys think it was, again, that's just more, I guess, subjective, you know, so to speak. But even when you look at Crystal Palace's lineup, there before the game anyway, and I think when I did my um when I did my match preview, I was speaking about it. So before the game, the two players that I thought, okay, and they ended up being, is Elise and Eze. Two very, very good players. Two players I would love for Liverpool to, you know, go in for in the summer because I think they're fantastic players. And I do think that they can offer us, you know, something, you know, in our team. And they've shown that, especially being at a team like Crystal Palace, be, being a team like Crystal Palace, having to defend and be the outlet at times within those kind of teams, they've shown that kind of, you know, mental strength to be able to do that. Obviously, they've had to do it, you know, throughout their time at Crystal Palace. So, as well as then show what they can do, you know, moving forward. So, two players, definitely. One player who shocked me um, in the game, just because I knew he was a 
would I say? He's, I mean, I've done a player watch on him. I know he's one of those kind of guys. But to come to Anfield and play the way you did, Adam Wharton, I have to give him props. I have to give him props. Um, Savage mentioned uh, he was talking about the game against uh, Manchester City. You know, it wasn't, you know, misplaced passes, frustrating kind of player. And that's kind of what I thought, you know, I thought, you know, he'd be good for Palace. Of course he would be, you know, uh, Palace do like to buy players from the championship. Will he be anything special? Remains to be seen. I guess it just depends on what Palace do moving forward um, in terms of the type of football that they, you know, obviously play. But at Anfield, him and Will Hughes in that middle of the park was mental. And when I say mental, it was like, they they bossed it, they, they, in my opinion, anyway. They really, really bossed it. Hughes coming to play down when he needed to calm it, you know, but then coming in with the with the tackles, making sure he's in the right positions when he needs to be. Then you got Wharton kind of doing the same thing, <clears throat> but then offering you that box-to-box -box role, you know, then dropping deep at times to pick up the ball, you know, from the defenders. And then when he is under pressure, I brother didn't look like he was phased at all. He did not look like he was phased at all. He just looked like, yeah, I'll pick up the ball. What do you mean? What, McAllister on my back? Yeah, calm, don't worry, man. I'll pop that about. Movement. You know what I mean? The one-twos. Listen, in the middle of the park, they'll make it, it look like we had Crystal Palace midfielders and they had Liverpool midfielders with the way that they were obviously popping the ball about. If you guys um, remember the first goal, the first goal, the only goal <clears throat> in the game, if you guys, if you, yeah, I saw it on Crystal Palace's um, uh, Twitter page uh, this morning or X page this morning. If you see the way that they were popping the ball about, listen, you know when I talk about football, you know when I talk about like, yeah, this is the kind of football I want my team to play. Yeah, yeah, that's the kind of sequences that I'm talking about. It's not just about passing the ball around and doing nothing. It's all about the off the ball movement. That's the only way you're going to get to move forward. Something I don't feel Liverpool do enough of. I'm not talking about runs. I'm not talking about running in behind. I'm not talking about playing the ball long. Your Sunday league tactics, just kick it long, see the fast guy on the wing, he'll be able to do something, pass it. No, 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 no. I'm talking real football. That's what they did for that first goal. Go watch it back if you haven't done so um, already because it was absolutely fantastic. You see here, um, obviously, these are just the average positions of how they kind of set up. You know, I mean, this is selfish, man. Sorry, man. You can see Liverpool being Liverpool um, kind of thing. If you look at our left-hand side, so that'll be like 17 and then 20, it was at like 26. And then you can see their right-hand side, you can see they dropped a little bit deeper because obviously Robertson was bombing forward quite a lot in the game. And listen, Robertson was our best player, in my opinion, anyway, during the game, especially in that first half. He was the only one trying to make things happen. He was the only one trying to get the team, you know, just motivated, like something I expect the captain to do. I expect the captain to do that. Yeah, I don't see that often, to be honest with you, anyway. And I've spoken on this more than enough times. The best centre-back in the world. The best centre-back in the world. But just because players are the best doesn't mean that they've got leadership qualities. I know some players can can lead by example. I get that. You know, and at times, it, it probably does look like that. Yeah, because he's the best. He's, you know, he's putting performance. But when we're talking real genuine leadership quality, or let me take that back. When we're talking leadership qualities, I want to see from my own captain. That's why Jordan Henderson was such a fantastic captain. A way better captain than, than Virgil. Way better. Forget forget the trophies he's won. I don't like that's you, we've got players who can do that, of course. And Van Dyke is one of them. I'm talking when you're talking about a genuine captain on the football pitch, someone who can get the get the guys going, someone who can amp up the players, you know, put put he's embodying what the manager wants on the pitch. Yeah, that's Jordan Henderson. Van Dijk is not that in the slightest. I've never thought that. <laughs> Hence why I was confused why he was the captain in the first place. I would have probably just had Robbo not obviously been injured so much this season. He just felt like he was a natural person for that kind of thing because of the way that he plays. It's it's infectious. It will get other players going. When you see your captain, you know, doing these lung busting runs, when you see your captain, you know, doing the madness. But again, I've spoken on the leadership within the team and stuff like that. I've spoken about that oh, hundreds of times. But again, when you're winning games, when you're looking cool doing it and your hair in, your hair hasn't moved once in the game, yeah, that's not going to be a problem. That Not a problem, but it's not going to be something that people are going to speak about or, or, or even touch on. Again, it doesn't matter because he's the captain. That's not something that's going to change. I get all of that. But it is just something that I've noticed a lot, you know, since the beginning of the season is that I just don't feel that not that he's not captain material. I think that might be the wrong phrase for it. Just that he's not a captain that I would look at 
and think to myself like, yeah, that's the guy that I want us to lead us into battle. I, I don't feel like that with, with Van Dyke. I never have felt like that. He's the guy that you want with you in battle, of course, because like I said, he's the best centre-back in the world, in my opinion. Um, but I would prefer someone else, just someone who on the pitch is just, yeah, just that little bit. But again, listen, all those kind of things do not matter because ultimately Klopp's picked him and, you know, it is what it is. Whether the new manager keeps that, I have no idea. But the way that Crystal Palace kind of set up in the game with that, of course, mid to low block. And, but at the same time, we say mid to low block. I mean, and by the way, Nathaniel, um, Nathaniel Klein and Munoz, on, uh, and Nathaniel Klein, Munoz on that right-hand side, and Tyreek Mitchell and Eze on that left-hand side, were in, like, they were impeccable in that first half. Like the way that they were just kind of closing down, you know, our spaces, you know, not allowing for the team. Yes, of course, at times, Diaz getting in, you know, to the byline, you know, trying to get a ball into the box. And then, of course, again, not Salah, but on the other side, we're trying to do the same thing. But at the same time, they were just so compact and they just did their job really, really well. And it's like they never got, you know, at times when, when Liverpool go through that part of a game, we, and we do it every single game where we're just relentless, relentless, relentless. We keep coming attack, attack after attack, you know, balls over the top, balls in behind, all of these kind of things. You start to see the opposition. They just start to wane a bit. And then all of a sudden they make a mistake or they do something erratic. No way, Jose. These guys were on point. They were on point. I proper Tyreek Mitchell, uh, Munoz, Nathaniel Klein, all three of those guys defensively, I thought were really good. Obviously, Anderson as well. I thought he was absolutely amazing you know, at the back there. So they really did their job. And again, it was another professional job from a team who were lesser in quality um, than Liverpool, just like Atalanta did. And of course, we saw in the game with the amount of chances, you know, that Crystal Palace even had in the game. And this is reminiscent. This is this is why I say this is, we've seen these games uh, like 100 times. 70% 70, 70 possession, 30% possession. 21 shots to their eight shots. Guess what? We we had six on target. They had five. So we had 21 shots, but we had six on target. They had eight and they had five on target. Cool. Ten shots off target. They only had one shot off target, two block shots. Like, big chances. Both had four big chances in the game. We missed four. They missed three. Both had four big chances in the game. Like, are we listening to ourselves? Are we listening to ourselves? That's why I said, like, when we talk about the attack, and we'll talk about the attack in a second, don't you worry. But when we talk about the attack, I can't just lay all the blame to the attack because it's not the attack's fault that the Crystal Palace are having big chances down the other end. You get what I'm trying to say? They're, they're having their own chances. We remember that Alisson saved two of them for Mateta. Mateta should have scored at least one of them. At least one of them. Obviously, the other one, um, no, no, it wasn't even a save. It was uh, uh, blo um, cleared off the line from Andrew Robertson. So, uh, again, Robertson, you know, he was the only one doing anything. But when when we're looking at that, you're thinking, Jesus Christ, Crystal Palace. Like, Mateta getting him behind. Obviously, Van Dyke had that dumb slip. <laughs> yeah, he needs to start his boots because you see, that, that seems to happen. But, you know, he, he had that slip and then Mateta was in straight away. Now, of course, on another day, that's it. It, it, it just, it just, it's just one of those kind of things. Maybe Van Dyke just clears it up, whatever. Yeah, it is what it is. Why, why would you even analyze it? Because it happened. <laughs> Do you get what I'm trying to say? And it, and not that Van Dyke slips, but these kind of situations seems to happen quite a lot. Like I, like I said, when they're having five shots on target anyway in the game. Yeah, come on, man. Like I said, it's these kind of things will frustrate people over a long period of time. They really will frustrate people because when you're watching it in real time, you're just thinking to yourself, like, serious? Like, it, it, I said it yesterday on um, Enz's calling show. I said about, I feel like Liverpool just overcompensate. It's almost like the guy who goes to the gym all the time to get big, get wham. You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's a, phew, yo, this guy, he's bolo, man. He's a he's a massive dude. But what's he overcompensating for? Again, I, I'll let you guys figure that one out. It's too early for that for that kind of chitter chatter. I almost feel like Liverpool's the same thing. We've always been like that anyway. In terms of we're a team who create chances at our best over the years, we create lots and lots of chances, but we don't really have the clinical strikers to be able to finish these chances and stuff like that. But this season just seems like it's amplified even more so. 
Like we, we generally, I generally feel like it's amplified even more so. Like you, you're having, it, I mean, this is just in this game. I mean, only 21 shots. I think in the last two games against Manchester United, it was like, what, 62 shots? And we didn't win any of them? Like you need that many shots and you don't win the game. Like I don't even understand that. But again, I feel like it's because you're overcompensating. We need a tactic that allows us to be able to have that many chances at goal because we don't have the clinical strikers, which is kind of fine if you can continue. Like, if you can keep that going, then fair enough. And we will have those blowout games, you know, where we'll win four nils, five ones, or whatever the case that we've done, you know, this season. But it's almost like, right, you need this many and you cannot score. You cannot score. I find that kind of weird, man. I, I find that very, 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 very weird. Let me go through some of the comments anyway before... Before we continue, because Liverpool getting my head hot for no reason, and it's early in the morning, and I'm sure I was trying to have good vibes. You know, what I mean, I was just trying to, you know I mean, just talking, talking stuff on the game. But typical Liverpool. Uh, big up everybody again who is inside. Make sure you are smashing the like button. Uh, let's start from here. Uh, Hollywood Rock Alonso has already won fifty percent of Klopp's Bundesliga titles and one out of three of his overall. Yeah, like I said, man, starts conversation start becoming spooky. Man, don't start telling me about how it changed the club and that. Uh, Reverend, that big up G down to club. Yeah, remember that. Uh, Marco, gonna, why don't scouts boo? Why don't scousers boo the players? I mean, would that even work? I, I don't really, I don't really believe in that booing the players and stuff like that. I, I, I don't really, I don't feel like that's gonna give the reaction that you think. It, I, I hear what you're saying, though. Don't, don't get twisted. There are times I sit there and think, bruv, every day, Nunez, 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 what, when he's missing? <laughs> like, at some point, do you just shut up and just stop saying that or stop telling Joe Gomez to shoot? Like, I, I don't know. Uh, Stefano, uh, thank God Robbo cleared that off the line when Virgil slipped. Rivals would have ran that slipping for years. Oh, that's it's, it's going to be turned into a meme because his slips are mad, though. We remember the one against Tottenham. Um, where was it? Was it? Um, oh, who was it? It was um, Perisic, Perisic on the wing. We remember that one. So, yeah, and then that one is still used as a meme anyway in certain instances. So, listen, they will definitely, you know what I mean? And I'll definitely think, hit the likes. That's what I'm saying. What we're doing, the numbers don't add up. That's what I'm saying, man. The numbers ain't added. The numbers ain't added. I know it's early morning vibes, guys. It's, it will only take you a nanosecond just to hit that like button, man. It proper helps to push the kind of content out so we can have even more people in these kind of conversations and you know what I mean? We can push it out to the right people. Push it out to the right people. Uh, Reverend Knight, did FA Cup against Manchester United just kill all our mentality, momentum and belief? If so, it's very fragile. That is pathetic. <clears throat> if it did, then yeah, I definitely agree. It's definitely pathetic because we shouldn't be going into that game. With, I'm not saying the guys were, were, were scared or anything, but we should be going into those kind of games kind of fearless anyway. Like I said, it's not like we've been coming into it in bad form. We're, we're far superior to Manchester United. I get it. It's a derby, biggest game in England, all of that kind of good stuff. But we are far superior. I mean, we've gone there before, Naby Keita and them, and, and slapped them. So I don't see why we couldn't go into this game with that same level. It's almost like a mentality block somewhere. You know, maybe because of the way that Manchester United matched up against us, maybe that might play a part in it. I don't know, but it definitely shouldn't do. I'll be honest, it definitely shouldn't do. Um, Ali Nuss, uh, our problem is that we got lost in big games. Love Klopp, but th that's the difference between him and Pep. Pep loves big games and plays under pressure. Yeah, I mean, we pl they play under pressure, we play under emotion. So sometimes that emotion will help you to win those big games, though. So in those kind of instances, it's, it's like a catch-22. Uh, Angel, the lack of urgency, aggression and tactical awareness in the games against Atalanta and Palace was completely unacceptable. I mean, I can't remember what minute he brought on Elliot in the game. Um, against Palace, but that's where again, th this is this is where I find it difficult because I'm like, I listen, I place blame on the players more so than anything because he put out a good enough team to go out and beat flipping Crystal Palace, and as we can see here, we had chances, you know, to potentially win the game. So did Palace, though, to be fair. So that's where I look at both of them because I'm like, players for not doing their job, but then also for you constructing a system and a tactic that allows for these kind of opportunities to happen quite frequently throughout a season. High risk, high reward is what I hear so much. I hear it so much. High risk, high reward, high risk, high reward, high risk, high reward. I get it. But at some point, 
And I know someone's probably going to say, but oh, but Manchester City, they're, you know, they're, well, that's like this season. <laughs> Their football, more often than not, is not usually like this. They're not usually a team where you're like, yeah, I can get at City. Yeah, if you just do it, like, it's very, like, it, it's so rare with City. Like, this season, obviously, it's happened quite frequently, but this is like a one-off. <laughs> like, this is literally like a one-off. City are usually quite, you know, impenetrable. You, you usually cannot even get get to these guys, you know, in, in, in any such way. With us, though, it's always been like this. Literally always been like that, where teams can always get at us kind of thing. And you're just like, we, we always give people a game. But if you like that exciting kind of football, then fairs. I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I can't see how you could like it. That that sounds a bit too chaotic for my liking um, and leaves too much into that grey area. And I don't like the grey area. Uh, big up, Philip. Morning, G. Uh, did Salah play? Because I hardly saw him during the game. Hey, listen, look, don't let ends, like, confuse you with, 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 with agendas. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> big up, Stephen. I wasn't happy with Endo and Nunes playing. I hear it. Endo's obviously was been kind of poor recently. Uh, I think he's just more tired, though. I feel like it's fatigue with Endo. Um, there's actually something that uh, I'll, I'll show you guys in a second. I think it's more fatigue with him. Um, Nunes, uh, Nunes, yeah, maybe, 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 maybe with Nunes. Um, we'll look at so this is obviously the minutes played in the last 28 days. Don't worry, guys, I'll get through to the to the rest of the comments. Um, I mean, VVD's played what's that 814, Diaz 697, Max 649, Ginger Kev. Why they would call him that, I don't know. Um, <laughs> 620, so Bozo 578. Bradley 555, Darwin 530, Mo 488. You know, these are a lot of minutes. And this is, by the way, in the last 30 days, this is a lot of minutes that these guys are actually playing anyway. So, yeah, it, it's, it's a bit of a crazy one. I mean, VVD 814, that's a lot of minutes the guy's playing. I mean, he can play anyway, so I'm not going to sit here and try to give him the benefit of the doubt or whatever. But again, like I said, these are a lot of minutes that, you know, these guys are actually playing. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, Stephen saying, I'm not happy with VVD. I hear it. Uh, just look at how Verd was regarded by Holland as captain too. They don't rate it. Yeah, I know. I remember bare people were like, nah, man, like, these Dutch guys are just chatting rubbish and da 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 They might be chatting rubbish. I, I, they might be chatting rubbish. I hear that. But I'm going to listen to them more than I would listen to most other people purely because they would know what it would take. And, like, this ain't, like, rubbish players that we're talking about. When it's, like, a dead player, like, I don't know, man like a Joey Barton or something like that, then you hear fairs that I can understand. You you may see it. Um, you may see it a bit like, nah, whatever kind of thing. But when you're talking about some of the top players that, you know, Holland have ever produced, like, I'm not saying it's true by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm definitely hearing what they're saying and being like, fairs, you know what? If you're going to, if you're going to be the one telling me this information, then, you know what I mean? I, obviously after that, I've just got to judge it myself. Uh, Fritz, uh, stop over protecting Nunes. Nunes has missed 25 missed chances oh we'll get onto that don't you worry about that sunshine uh revenite all forwards cost us especially nunez in my opinion all of them have all of them have i can't just be, be, lay it onto nunez they all have salah nunez diaz jota with that shot um <laughs> the block was so good but it, it it just it's like on top of everything you you're just sitting there thinking yeah that's just typical isn't it that's just typical <clears throat> Ali, most people keep comparing Nunes with Haaland. Haaland has only one job at City to score. Nunes is working uh, a lot more. And I bet that Klopp is asking that from him like he did with Bobby before. Yeah, 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 of course. The the the, the roles of a Nunes and Haaland are totally different. They're not the same roles. They don't do the same things by any stretch of imagination. So <clears throat> Nunes, I mean, Haaland couldn't come to Liverpool and do the job of Nunes. Nunes will be will blatantly be a better player in that kind of regards. But as we're seeing now, we just want the ball in the back of the net. So there's only one man that's going to be able to do that consistently. Um, uh, stop over protecting Nunes. He's missed 25 big chances. We've drawn eight games and lost three games. He's our dominant number nine. His goals could have turned those draws to wins and also turned our losses to wins. I definitely remember that Luton game. That's the one I really look at and think, yeah. The others, maybe, I, I hear it. I would have to go back through the games. But 
the Luton one sticks out like a sore thumb, definitely, because you cannot miss from them kind of angles. Um, I'm done with him. Bring me Isak. Angel, uh, why did Klopp send Dan's back to the youth team after he had scored twice and impacted games? He had to come off the bench. Him, I feel like that he don't know if he would have been ready. I thought about that, and don't worry, guys. Um, at the end of this stream, um, it will redirect you to my live tomorrow morning where we're going to be talking about by uh, Dan's, um, and some other stuff as well. So, yeah, we can definitely chop it up and talk about talk about that indeed. Um, Stephen's saying, I think players will leave the club now. Uh, Phil, uh, Philip Nunes was wasteful, but at least we saw him in Diaz trying to score, unlike Salah, where he was nowhere to be seen. I hear it. Salah was pony. We're going to do our match ratings in a sec. Uh, Stefano Isak is basically Thierry Henry regem. He's, a, he's such a he's a fantastic striker. One of the best strikers in the league, in my opinion. I fought so for ages. You know, when you're trying to do like a, a ranking of strikers, he's in the, like the top three, in my opinion. Not even not this season. I'm just talking in general. Like if I look at strikers in the Premier League, he's in the top three, and I can't remember who I had second. Uh, Social joins your forwards cost you. We got friggin' Gabriel Jesus. At least you guys get into chances. Yeah, I know. That's why we all not get away with it because we didn't get away with it. But that's why we keep having opportunities. That's why some people's GAs looks crazy when others don't. Uh, Fritz Nunes ain't. Ain't a prospective academy player. He's just not that guy for us. I hear it. Reverend Knight, four big chances miss a, a caramba. It's deja vu. Yeah, I know. It, it's This happens a lot, but we win those games. Remember, we will win these kind of games. So when we win the games, no one cares about the big chances that you're missing. That's the point. That, that's the annoying point about all of this. People, the tacticals online will, will tell you about game state and this, that, and the other. I'm just like, brother. Sometimes just call a spade a spade. That guy is not clinical. I'm not going to say they're shit because they're not shit. But that guy is a crap finisher. And I'm, and when I say that guy, I'm talking about more or less the entirety of that front line bar Diogo Jota. Literally because he seems like the only natural finisher <clears throat> in general. But it is what it is. Uh, we had a ridiculous amount of missed chances against Manchester United. Stefan, I need a cold finisher. Enough of these emotional men. Yep, it is. <laughs> Matin Fenwa, big man thing. The way he was playing, yeah, 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 yeah. He was moving. He was moving mad. He was definitely moving mad. He was definitely moving mad. Uh, let's get to another one. Endsman is very coincidentally on holiday as our season falls apart. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. No coincidences. Hmm. And we say, trying to run from the run from the grind. Now, big up, Enzo, man. I don't know if he is away today, but if he is, man, big up to yourself, man. I hope you're enjoying your time away. I'll give him a shout later on. Uh, Psychedelic, uh, do you think our new coach will keep our attackers this summer or will he buy someone new? Um, I think he has to buy someone new. I don't know who that new coach is going to be because the way that Amarim was talking, he sounded like he didn't even want to come to Liverpool. Um, but I, yeah, I, I've said it for time. Like, you just go out and sign a striker. Just go and sign someone who could put the ball in the back of the net. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't think like you need to worry too much about what they can do off the ball if you set up your team in a way that they can do the off the ball stuff. I'm not saying everybody has to be Manchester City. There are more than enough teams out there who can get a striker or who have strikers and play a system that allows for the striker to do what the striker needs to do, which is put the ball in the back of the net, brother. That's all I'm asking. I'm not, and and when I say put the ball in back in the net, I'm talking put the ball in back in the net consistently and efficiently. Now, problem with, that you've got, that's why when we say about Salah, is that Salah misses so many chances. I would be intrigued to see someone like uh, a Watkins and Bigger Andrew just said it there. If, if Watkins had the same amount of chances that Salah had, I wonder if he would score more goals than Salah. And would we be looking at Watkins a lot differently? Not to say we don't look at him now like he's a he's a top striker in the in in the Premier League, but I'm just saying in general. Imagine if he had you know the same amount you know the same amount of chances. But listen, th th that's neither here nor there. That's that's neither um, here nor there. When we look at some of the you know some of the players, and we'll, again we'll, we'll talk more about we'll talk more about these strikers and stuff um, and how wasteful they've been. Uh, when you can see here. Watara Endo, you know, in the game, I just thought he was just so, so off the pace. Don't worry, I see your questions, by the way. I'll, I've just started them now. 
I'll, I'll get to them at the end. Um, yeah, Endo, he was just off the pace in the middle of the park, bro. So off the pace. Eze in the game, I thought he was like, honestly, I said a hundred times, go and sign Eze. Just go and sign this guy. Because off the ball, he's really, really good defensively. Really good. Really switched on. Intelligent. Understands. Positional awareness. Good on the ball. Fantastic strike of the ball. Can also play in the pockets of spaces if you need him to. And guess what? Can also play on the left-hand side if I need him to go out to the left for any reason. Like, he fills in many positions. He plays centre mid, attacking mid, false nine, left wing. He, listen, Eze, baller. I promise you, you will not be disappointed if you sign someone like Eze. Jones. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> like, I, I want Jones to be in the... I mean, the, the mischance is the mischance. <laughs> you, you know, it is what it is. But just in general, when I was looking at Jones, I was just like, bro seriously man like we i want you in the middle of the park to bring that sense of calmness but you alongside the other midfielders just losing the ball in you know constantly absolutely constantly mateta um i know they give him a low rate in here i thought he was fantastic should have scored though like that that's where you look at it and why i would if i was to do a match rating for them i would you know put the match rating down for him because he didn't score but Everything else Mateta did, he was at times he was bullying Kanate and Van Dyke, bullying them. And and I I don't think I've ever said that about a striker, but he was actually bullying them at points. They were un they were so uncomfortable with Mateta at the back there, it was becoming silly. Like it, it started to become a little bit embarrassing that I'm looking at two of the best um, centre backs in in Europe right now, and they were just getting outdone by this guy. And that's not to be disrespectful to him, but that's how it started to look at one stage. I was just like. Brother, man, Van Dyke. at times you look like you don't even want it. And when you are going in for some of these challenges, I can tell you don't really have that level of belief. I mean, he's a big guy. He's a he's a big guy. Do you get what I'm trying to say? And he's strong on the ball. So he will unsettle most people anyway. But the way that he was performing in that game, it just seemed like he had the extra bit of oomph like about him. You know, at times, Kanate as well, you know, he just looked. And Kanate, I always looked at as... He's the brute of that back line kind of thing. So he's the one that will do that dirty work for Van Dyke, you know, at moments. And he looked like he didn't want it at all. Looked like he really, really, really didn't want it. So, yeah, man, it, 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 it's, it was one of those things. that That's probably why I was a little bit more shocked with some of the performances that I was seeing. Because, it, like I said, it wasn't just a simple, oh, yeah, we missed our chances. No, we were performing poorly. Like, players were performing poorly as well, you know, in the game. Mikel Lise, another player I would love Liverpool to sign and we probably should have signed. But because of his injury record recently, I can understand why, you you know, you may not want to sign him at this current moment in time. But him there, again, there was one touch that this guy did in the game, but I was just like... Yo, Salah, you might need to take lessons from this guy, you know, because you ain't doing them kind of touches, bringing the ball down, you know what I mean, under that kind of... Like, he does it at times, but the way that Alise did it was just with this coolness about him. Yeah, man, it was crazy. It was crazy. Um, And the, the way that Alise is, obviously, he's more of an attacking player. He likes to be in that final third. He likes to be in the opposition box more than anything. Defensively, he was still doing his work as well. You can see even by just looking at the heat map alone, Spent more of his time back there than he did, you know, further forward. But then again, finding those pockets of spaces. This is what linking up well with Eze and Mateta and also helping out in the midfield area as well. He's another one who I, I think can also fill in a couple of um, positions. I don't think it's just a he's a right winger and that's it. I think he could play attacking midfield as well. I think he can even play there. Whether a manager will do that, I, that remains to be seen. But I do think he can play, you know, that position if needed. But yeah, these two, yeah, for me, these two were just poor, man. So poor. Communication, not there. Cohesion, not there. You, you know what I mean? Like, nothing was there with these two. And I didn't understand it because I was like, they're only playing one up top and they're looking for the outlet. He is the outlet kind of thing. So really, all it, all it is is about the communication between you two just to understand who goes, who stays, who runs with him, who tracks him. Where is he? You know, it just seemed like he was just unsettling both of them and he wasn't even on both of them all the time. He was only going to, you know, he might go down Van Dyke's side. He might go down Canate's side every now and again. He was like switching between the two, depending on, you know, wherever the ball was. But they just looked so unsettled. I was like, are you guys really letting this one guy, this one guy, and we're not talking like some prime Benzema or something. Talk about this guy. And again, I don't want to be disrespectful 
to Mateta because I think he played very, very well. But come on, come on. We're talking about Van Dijk and Canate. We're not talking about Reese Williams and Nat Phillips. We're talking about Van Dijk and Canate. And they look like Reese Williams and Nat Phillips at points in the game. Do you get what I'm trying to say? And that, that's what frustrates me more. Because I'm just looking at it thinking, bro, you can't go out like sad like this. Like this is it's starting to look all, all crazy right about now. Like I'm not feeling the way that you two at the back just don't you don't you you, you don't give me confidence at this current moment in time. You're not giving me that level of confidence that everything is shut up shop. We all we all want to be dropping, we all want to be dropping Van Dyke's stats from the season. Yeah, ain't never been dribbled past and hasn't done this, that, and the third. Okay, cool, no worries. Done really, really well back then. Done really, really, really well. Well, guess what? When he's stinking up the joint as well, we have to. You, you've got to. You got. You got to give the same energy. I, well, I need to see the same energy. I don't want to hear about how yeah, he's not been dribble pass. I don't want to hear that he's winning all these headers. I don't care about all of that because I need him now. All of that's before. Now I need you to keep continuing to perform to that kind of level. Last three games, no, you have not done that. You haven't done that. You are the captain of the team, Canate. Like I said, fantastic defender. Absolutely fantastic defender. I cannot trust you. I cannot trust you. I don't know if you're going to be fit today, if you're going to be injured tomorrow, if you're going to be this, that. I, I, I don't know. I, like, And for that, I can't trust you. Until you can prove otherwise, I can't trust you, bro. Just like Joe Gomez. He lost that trust time ago. So anything now is just a bonus. I still don't trust Joe Gomez. I wouldn't. Why would I trust him? He's not proven that he can be trusted. He's proven that now, yeah, he's been okay this season. But he's just one, you don't know if he's just one turn up the stairs to the toilet away from being injured. And Kanate is the same thing. I don't know if this brother is going to be fit or not. Fantastic defender. I just want to keep reiterating that. Very, very good defender, though. But I cannot trust you. I can't trust you, bro. We'll get to the rest of the comments, and then we'll do my player ratings. Um, and guys, make sure you um, you chime in as well. I'd like to know what you guys think. Hey, OG, Diddy. Hey, hey, hey. No Diddy, man. No Diddy. No Diddy. Uh, Ezekiel, uh, we just need to relax in front of goal and stop being so anxious to score. It's very true. It just seems like that composure doesn't always seem to be there. Uh, MNE, uh, we should be screwed. Is that five? That's the number five, right? Hey, don't. You know what I mean? You're, you're trying to do maths at 11.30 in the morning. <laughs> um, we should be screaming tactics, tactics, tactics. Listen, it's like sorcery uh, from Stephen. It's like sorcery that's been put on our club. Yeah, man, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. But uh, psychedelic, the doubt started to creep in after the United game, started to lose belief. I think I went through this. Uh, will you buy someone new? Yeah, 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 yeah. Ezekiel, we're just not good enough. Revenite, which strike are you taking? Um, I mean, if that comes to mind straight away, obviously that's just more like an obvious choice. I probably have to do more reports, like a scout on someone. If I just had to, if you just off top of your head, it would probably be Isak. Like that would be the one I've always wanted. Um, yeah. But I wasn't sure about him last season, though. I will say that. I'm not going to sit here and act like, yeah, I've always said he's sick. Nah, I've just always thought he's interesting. Last season showed me he can finish. The injuries and stuff, I was like, mm -hmm. okay, fair enough. But he just showed me he could finish at a very, very consistent rate. And he had so many different types of finishes in his game. Always composed in front of goal. You see the way he takes his penalties and stuff like that. So he was the one I kept looking at thinking, all right, let me see what you do next season. Because I like to, I have to give people two seasons. I, I, I do not sign, I do not want any player off of one season ever. I don't want to see that kind of player. Um, I need to have at least a two season thing, you know, from you because then that shows that you've got the consistency to keep it going. Um, trying to think of another striker. I mean, Giriakes is, is Giriakes. He's he's good for sporting. I think he's very very good. I would still need to see like at least six months again next season to know if it's really, really good. Then I might choose him because I feel like deadly in front of goal. Deadly, deadly, deadly in front of goal. But I just don't know if he'll be able to hack it at the top level like that. I'm just not super convinced. But that could change in six months' time. 
definitely can change in six months' time. But throw some names out there, guys. Depend the throw some names. Uh, Stephen, depending on who leaves, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It literally does uh, it literally does kind of depend on that. Uh Revenite, uh Eze, Isak, and Kudus, and a six in the summer for me. Eze, Isak, and Kudus. Yeah, that'd be a good summer. I, I wouldn't mind that summer too. Be interested to see who the six would be. About all those three players, yeah, I agree with. Um, Christian, this game has shown why none of these players except for McAllister are made for the top. I think that's a bit harsh because, I mean, Van Dyke, Allison, <laughs> you know I mean, <laughs> Robertson, like they've done, you know what I mean, they've done their thing before. So to say that they're not made for the top, I feel like it would be a little bit disingenuous. But I understand where you're coming from, bro. Stephen, uh, we need to strengthen the spine of the team. So central defense, central midfield, and center forward. Yep. I was trying to think, is there anyone I don't agree with? But yep, yeah, I agree, I agree, I agree. Uh, we need players all over the pitch. I don't know if we were all saying this, though, when we were winning games, though. That's what I want to know. We were winning games, like, hmm. Mateta is six foot four and wide. John, Ronnie, Coleman, Mateta. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like, he, he just used his attributes so well. So, so well. Some people forget attributes, disrupt players. How many Matetas do they play against, even in training? Yeah, exactly. Big up social. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. Some like if you're not used to playing against that all the time, then yeah, that, that's why a Holland would be somewhat difficult. But at the same time, like Mateta, they might not always score in games, but they'll be a nuisance enough within that game to be able to cause you know the other team problems. Uh, Christian VVD isn't a big game player. Man, I was talking about they thought I was finished after winning an energy drink cup. <laughs> that's funny. Um, Stefano, how do we rate our midfield rebuild out of 10 now? Listen, man, we're giving it crazy scores. So I don't know. I don't know. I would wait until the end of the season anyway. Yeah, I'll wait until the end of the season. I don't know if I could give it a scoreline right now. Um, but if I had to, like, overall, maybe like seven. Because McAllister has been, you know, he's shown to be good once played in his position. Endo has surprised us. It's only really the Bozzelai and Gravenberg to have been overall a bit underwhelming, so to speak. A bit underwhelming. Six might be a bit too low. I feel like you could give it a um you could give it a thing. <laughs> Big up the gaffer inside. <laughs> Big up Jerry, man. Uh, I'm hearing people are screaming crop out. Nunez ain't good enough and Zabozla and McAllister are overrated. What a morning. We got Chief Minister. Hey, what a morning. What a morning. What a morning, I promise you, man. It's crazy because when me and Jerry were having these same conversations, about you lot were killing us in the chat, killing us. Uh, Realism, Jared, two weeks in a row, they couldn't pull out a win. Uh, mentality has to be questioned. We had the better players, but doesn't show it on the pitch. Uh, that means they can't handle the pressure to win. Maybe so, to be fair. Maybe so. I mean, a lot of these players are quite new. You know, the McAllisters, the Endos, the Bozzolais, Gravenberchers, uh, even the, the Diaz's, uh, the Diaz Nunes and stuff like that. They're relatively new to this. This title race stuff. They're, they're, well, they're, they're all definitely new to the title race, you know. So that pressure that comes with being in the title race, yeah, it, it's 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 peak, you know. It's peak. It's peak. It's peak. Uh, Ali knows before buying, we need to get rid of some players. Yeah, of, of course, of course. Angel saying I'd keep Diaz, Jota, and Gapo. Salah and Darwin can go in the summer. Yeah, so you need to definitely replace Diaz with Salah. <laughs> Uh, social joins gear is good not a superstar but he is the real deal and will keep scoring his mentality to go up levels is there check his numbers yeah I, i'm by the way i'm definitely not against him i just need to see him at the top level for a bit longer it's a bit like the alonzo thing alonzo done amazingly well just won the bundesliga unbeaten so far unbeaten in the entire you know the entire league Am I convinced that you're this great manager? No, because I haven't seen you do it for more than one season to really say kind of thing. Even if I took into consideration what he did last season in terms of picking them up and taking them to whatever level, I was still like, mm, no, nah. the next season will be the determining factor for me because next season, this is uh, talking about Alonso and Gearcares, for example, different type of pressures. Now we see how you are under these type of pressures because the top managers under these kind of pressures, this is where... This is where they earn the big bucks. This is where they win those Champions Leagues or win those leagues or, you know, are battling to the end of, you know, the end of the season for certain competitions. That's the top managers. 
just because you get there, that doesn't make you a top manager. It's about can you stay there? That is why we call these Sir Alex Ferguson's, the Pep Guardiola's, the Jose Mourinho's, the Carlo Ancelotti's. That's why they are the best. Because when they get there, they stay there. Not get there and fall off. You're out of the way for like two years, three years, and then you come. No, 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 no. That cannot be the definition of a top manager. Top manager gets there and gets there and he stays there. So if Alonso can stay there, that's when we're really talking about him being a top, top manager. But until then, he's got the credentials, attributes and stuff like that. Just like Gear Career has got the, <clears throat> um, he's got the credentials, he's got the attributes, all of that kind of good stuff. Just hasn't proven it on that stage consistently. That's it. But right now he's showing, put me in that big stage and let me get my audition to show you guys, you know, what I can kind of do. Imagine we had Kane. Oh, Jesus Christ. But when I was saying, you know, we should... I agree, realism, bro. When I was saying, bro, get Kane, spend that 100 mil on Kane, oh my God, the amount of chances that Liverpool create, and you then will finally have the striker that you almost, I feel like he wants, which is someone who can drop into the midfield like a Firmino. He would be better at it in terms of, he's a better passer than, than Firmino, way better finisher than, than Firmino. Firmino obviously did, you know, the defensive work, so I would say he's Firmino is better than Kane at doing that, but then you would just have these kind of little pieces and the one of the most, if not the deadliest, alongside Haaland finisher in world football. It would have been dumb. Uh, I meant to say they are not turning in, turning up in big moments on a consistent basis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I, I feel what you're saying. I feel what you're saying. Uh, Alinus is saying, Ruben Amarim said that he's not looking to join Liverpool in the summer. <laughs> but this is what I'm saying. Listen, you didn't make me do all of that flipping work and you're telling me you don't want to join Liverpool. Uh, Angel saying, Endo looks exhausted. Maka looks fatigued. So Bozalai, like I said, we'll get into the we'll get into the into the player ratings. Um, and then obviously we'll do a little, what I say, QA or whatever at the end of it, and then we will head out. But just before we get into the player ratings, do I want to show it now? Yeah, I'll show it now. I'll show it now before we get into player ratings. Uh cool. Yeah. These are the kind of things that man's waking up to in the morning, by the way. Liverpool have already missed more big chances than they had in their title winning season. 66, which is the most so far in the Premier League. Last season, 78. Season before that, uh, 50, 59, which was the third highest. Season before that, I think. That, yeah, season before that, 68. Like, Yo, this team be missing way too many. Yeah, Revenite. Stats are mad. The stats are definitely mad. The stats are definitely mad. Like, I didn't even know this, by the way. So when I did wake up this morning, I'm you know looking at a few of the stats and stuff like that. Um, just to just to kind of see, just to kind of see. Um, but yeah, th those those stats are quite alarming. I, I will I will say that much. They are quite alarming. This one was more alarming though. This one was more alarming. <laughs> There's obviously one player in there that you guys will just see straight away and be like, yo, what's going on? Kind of thing. Big up reason. People go overboard now. Everyone is shit. But two weeks ago, people wanted to sell Ali Trent saying Endo Mac in team of the season. Best centre-back pair and best attack in two weeks. Crazy. Bro, this is what I'm saying, um, RJ. This is what I'm saying. Everybody, like, this is, this is why it's like I, I try... To, to explain to people, let's not go too overboard with these things. Let's not go too far, kind of thing. Because two weeks ago, we were calling some of these guys, as you, as um, RJ said, Mac has to be in the team of the season. Endo, yo, maybe he has to be the best DM this season, kind of thing. Trent, yo, he was player of the season before he got injured. All of a sudden now, these guys are just, just out here. But yeah, you guys can obviously see this. I mean, at least Mo is consistent. <laughs> at least Mo is consistent. This is obviously big chances scored, big chances missed. And obviously at the bottom of the graph, you can see how many big chances they've actually had uh, this season. So Mo's had 30. He's been consistent, though. We like he, He's been consistent. Scored 15, but he's missed 15. That's consistency right there. Diogo Jota, consistency. 7-7. Seven, seven. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, but the rest of them... I mean, Gapo, 
don't know what number that would fall on. Uh, maybe like fourteen, maybe fifteen. No, thirteen, maybe. <laughs> Relatively consistent, I guess. Diaz, six, sixteen. I'm so dumb. Why don't I just add it up the the two numbers? <laughs> um, he, he would have had sixteen, right? Scored six of them, missed ten of them. It's kind of a lot, man. That's kind of a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Revenant. I'm so dumb. I don't know why I didn't just add the two numbers together because that would give me the actual bloody number. Um, and then obviously Darwin at the bottom. Darwin at the bottom, thirty-nine. And only scored seven of them. <laughs> Man's missed thirty-two big chances. That is crazy. And then people wonder, and then the Darwin sexuals always wonder why people just crash it on him on a consistent basis. Because my brother, you cannot have 32 big chances missed and only be scoring seven of the 39, but you've missed that. Like, yeah, yeah, that's mad. That's don't get twisted. Salas is bad as well, by the way. You're missing your uh, top, you know, our top earner and stuff like that. Like, I, I expect that number to be lower. Like, I expect you to be scoring more kind of thing. If we're going to be paying you the big bucks, so you're not getting... None of these guys are exempt, by the way. Salah, probably more so Salah, because you are um, you are the, the big dog, you know, in the attack. So I kind of expect those numbers to be a bit better. But 32, though, brother. And the thing is, you're having more chances with Nunes in the team. So it's almost like a six or one, half a dozen or the other. I don't even know what to even make of that. Because on one hand... When Nunes is on the pitch, we create more chances and we get more chances. But on the on the other hand, he's missing them. So does it even matter that he's getting the chance? Like, I don't even know. Where do you even take something like this? Like, how do you even take something like this? Like, what do we even do with this kind of... When I saw this, I was like, I don't even know what to do with this information. I'm just going to share it with the people. Maybe they'll know what to do. <laughs> because I don't even understand how this can even be a thing. You, you know, I, like, I really, 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 really don't know. Yeah, I'm going to try and see if I can get one. Um, this was posted by, uh, it was on his YouTube, the YouTube, it was on his Twitter page, actually. He posted it up. I think it's something Simon, Simon Brundish or something like that. Simon Brundish, Simon Brundish on Twitter. He must have posted it out and I saw it and I was like, rah, <laughs> that, that's kind of mad. That's kind of mad. Uh, RJ saying three of Klopp's domestic cup finals. He won. It went to penalties because we couldn't score. But it's so mad though, RJ. Like, obviously, this isn't. I don't know. <clears throat> this isn't including uh, cup finals. I don't think. I don't know. But the fact that this is like we're having so many like big chances in across the season, and the the rate that these guys are scoring at. I don't know what Darwin's were, uh, rate was prior to the game. I'm sure I kept hearing people say 11%. I might be paraphrasing. I might be wrong. I actually can't really remember. But I do remember it being quite low, to be fair to you. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, I would love to see what the midfielders ones are like as well. I mean, Curtis Jones yesterday. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. But that's to me, that's a big chance. I don't know if they put that down to um, a big chance or not. Uh, RJ, we have never been clinical. Why are people surprised? Exactly. Hence, in major trophies, one Premier League, one UCL, and continue runners-up in Premier League and UCL, not clinical in the game that you win stuff. I hear it. I fully hear it. But we've had this conversation, RJ, that like we've spoken about, you know, this in terms of just in its entirety. Hence why we will be having this conversation um, in regards to Liverpool come the end of the season. For now, let's just, you know what I mean? Christian, I think Darwin is an actual, I'm not going to say that, no normal player misses that many chances. I hear it. I hear it. I hear it. Uh, Ali Nuss, we are a strange club anyway. Diaz played the most minutes this season and Diaz is earning less money than Adrian. I know. it. Uh, I mean, his incentives must be kind of mad. I, I believe. I don't know. I haven't checked um, the, the contract situation, but yeah, it's weird. Base salary and stuff. Maybe, yeah, it's just base salary versus incentives and stuff like that. Uh, Revenite, if those Kovacs to Liverpool rumours are true and Amroom rejected us, we are finished. Oh, don't get twisted. If Amroom doesn't come to Liverpool, yeah, nah, man's not trying to hear anything else. Like, then you you know you have to start looking in the mirror and be like, am I really that guy? Yeah, just like Drake said, you was popping back when Usher had a U-chain, boy. Yeah, you was popping, but you ain't popping now. 
Um, let's just go through to the player ratings. We'll talk some more come the end of this because I'm very intrigued to know what you guys are giving for some of the ratings for some of these players. You was popping back and Usher had a you change. God damn you change. Uh, G, you heard the stat that in the last six games, we got 6% conversion rate, second worst in the league. <laughs> First of all, who's the worst in the league? <laughs> Secondly, the fact that we're even close to that is mad. <sighs> all right, people, let's just do the player ratings and then, yeah, we'll chop it up come the end of this. We will chop it up. Okay, Allison in goal. Allison obviously back in the starting lineup. Everybody was excited. And to see him back in the starting lineup, um, I felt he had a somewhat average game. Um, yeah, I felt like he had an average game, so to speak. And obviously, he pulled off that save to Mateta. But I just mean in general, I, I, it's, so, it's so hard for me to rate goalkeepers that time because I'm like, if you're only doing like one thing in the game, I, I don't know, really know what else uh, am I really realistically rating you on. Uh, made three saves in the game. Uh, yeah. Like, I mean, what do you guys think? I mean, I could give him like a potential... Never know, I said five in a 6.9. Yeah, that, that, I wish you know. I'm, maybe I'm, you know, I might just start doing stuff like that, where I just put like instead of the point fives and stuff, because sometimes I feel, yeah, I don't feel like maybe you was a bit more than like a, a six point five, but I don't feel like you was a seven, so to speak. Allison, yeah, I'd, I don't know because I don't feel like you did. It's it's, it's obviously the goalkeeper. It's unfair because you don't, if you're not doing too much kind of thing and not everything is going to be your fault as to why what's happening um but you know he made them saves which are very very good very crucial at the time um i mean that i mean robertson had to help him out in one instance because he got chipped like an absolute you know what um brian saying six i'll give 6.5 i'll give 6.5 i don't think he was dead or anything like that before anyone starts crying their eyes out uh connor bradley Obviously, he came off injured, um, but prior to him coming off injured, uh, did I feel like he was good in the game? I feel like at times they did try to double up on him. They did see him as, all right, cool, like Tyreek Mitchell versus Bradley. That was a good little battle um, before um, before Bradley's obviously come off the pitch. Six, maybe. Maybe a six for Bradley. Purely because he ended up coming off injured anyway. Um, but prior to that, he was okay. He was okay down that side he was okay down that side like he was trying to get himself forward you know in that first half uh accurate passes mm, bit meaty there successful dribbles long balls tackles one interceptions recoveries rules one uh ground rules one two out of four yeah yeah i mean if you guys want to go lower then i can go lower than that yo man i said five five point fives all right, cool. We'll go with five, six, five, five point five. I'll go with five point five then. We'll go with five point five. Hey, I'm trying to be kind. Uh, Kanate and Van Dyke. I'm grouping them together because I'm giving them both a four. Um, yeah, I'm giving them both a four. I think they were. I think they were so poor. I, I didn't like their performance at all. I know Virgil got uh, a couple of chances where he could score goals um, in the box and stuff like that. Um, but that they, they were, yeah, Alinus, yeah, it's like a together a five, but I'm putting them as a together as a four because definitely below average performance. If, if I'm being honest, um, they were poor, man. I'm sorry, bro. Like one striker, you know, doing madness, and you guys were just one. Like, I just, you know, sometimes I just can't believe, like, obviously, you know, when you back in the day, you got them deadly strikers, you're like, yeah, this, <clears throat> this one guy is going to occupy us both. You, do you get what I'm trying to say? Like, hey, be careful of Alan Shearer. You know what I mean? Be careful of my clone running in behind as a centre-back. But when you've got Mateta, and again, I'm not trying to be disrespectful to Mateta, but when you've got him and you're saying, what, this guy is causing you th this much problems. And then on top of that, the chances that this team are getting in, forget M Mateta, just the chances. 
<clears throat> the opportunities they're getting in behind. Like, yo, crazy, 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 crazy. Canate 4, VVD 3, VVD 2. Canate VVD 3. You know what, Stephen? Maybe I'm leading to more towards that. You know, I'm giving, all right, cool. We'll give them both a free. Give them both a free. Uh, Robertson, um, I'll just say it now I thought he's Liverpool's best player. Um, I'd probably give him a seven because I did think I, towards like the ending of the game, it just started to wane his level of intensity, but he couldn't keep that, you know, forever, you know, kind of thing. Of course, in the first half, though, in those first few minutes, yeah. In those first in that first half, he was really trying to perform, really trying to get the team going. And like I said before, up and down that left hand side, he was causing them a few bit of problems, especially in that kind of right wing back area where they were more on the defensive more than anything. Um yeah, I'll give Robbo, yeah, I think Robbo a seven, I think personally, anyway. I think he was all right in the game. Uh yeah, yeah, Robbo seven easily. Yeah, yeah, calm, calm, calm. All right, let's move on to the midfield. Uh, we'll start with McAllister. It's the first one that comes up. I don't know why it comes up like that. Uh, McAllister. You know what's mad about McAllister's performance? I don't even really remember it. I actually don't even really remember his performance. I'll be so honest with you. Like, when I'm trying to think back to it, yeah, I, I, I'm six might even be the score. And I feel like I might even just giving him a six because... I'm trying to remember something like, yeah, Mac of four. Yeah, like, was he? Mm, I don't feel like fours. Nah, because we gave, who did we give? We gave, we gave Ibu and Kanate the freeze. Mac six when he was there, kind of asking for more. Yeah, I feel like average. I feel like he was just average. I hear what you're saying, though. I hear what you, you guys are saying. Passing was, oh my God, the midfield passing was like, it, it was starting to pee me off. It was generally starting to pee me off. Like, I didn't understand why every pass you're making is just either to the opposition. You're losing the ball. They're getting to the ball first. They're harassing you. They're tackling you. You're spending time on the ball. I didn't even understand, like, what was going on. I was thinking, this isn't even making sense. Like, McAllister, Curtis Jones, yo, man, you guys are supposed to be the calm ones in the middle of the park. And right now, you are not showing me the level of calm that I expected from you. I'm seeing it from Wharton. I'm seeing it from Hughes. But I ain't seeing it from you, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. Most memorable thing is giving away the ball. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. That's all I kept really remembering with him was just giving the ball away all the time, man. Not all the time. That's being disingenuous. Not all the time. I know someone's going to get the stats and be like, well, technically he didn't. But <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll give him a five. Um, Curtis Jones. No, no, no. Endo, endo, endo. Endo, endo, endo. I thought he was poor. I thought he was poor. Yeah, I, I thought, I mean, the mischance just kind of compounded everything. But taking out the mischance, I thought Endo was, yeah, I just thought, I'm sorry, that's, that's talking about Jones. But Endo in general, like, he was just in the middle of the pitch. Like, there wasn't really a, a battle. Yeah, Revenant, you're right, man. He was just getting bullied. He was just getting bullied in there. Freeze, freeze. Yeah, I'll, I'll give him a free, man. I feel like, yeah, you just were not it. You just not it, man. And I don't know again if it's just fatigue, because it might just be a, a fatigue thing. But if that is the case, then that's definitely something to look at. Uh, JB Endo has been horrible since he's been back. I wouldn't say he's been horrible, but you can just definitely see that there's whether he's just not able to keep up that level of consistency that he did have before, where he was showing us. Then yeah, and yeah, it's true. Every time teams press him, he. I mean, I'm not asked. I mean. Maybe that's just the job role of him. So maybe it's because we're not asking him to do that. But he just don't look calm at all. Like, every time I see him, he just does not look calm at all. Uh, let's move on to Jones anyway. Uh, Curtis. Yeah. I mean, as I was saying before, Jones with the mischance, fair enough. Like, that was absolutely atrocious. Like, I, I didn't even understand. I, like, when he took the shot, I thought, okay, yeah, this is in. I actually thought it was in. I was even literally, I think I looked down at my phone to say, all right, cool. Let, let me see how um, I was trying to um, look at the statistics of the game. Because I like to look at the stats as the game's kind of going along. Because I, I sometimes I try to follow it to see, are they saying the same thing I'm saying? Anyways, as I'm watching it, I'm thinking, yeah, he scored. And then I look up and then I'm like, I, I don't see the scoreline changing to one. Like, what's going on? I don't really quite understand. Um, but yeah, Jones, I thought was poor. 
in possession, out of possession. Yeah, like I said, the whole midfield was, was poor, man. Jones four, Jones three, Jones two, Jones four. <laughs> Tom Jones would have been more used. <laughs> hey, big up Tom Jones. It's not unusual. Uh, RJ, that's what pressure does make people zone out and freeze and just get rid of the ball so they don't have to deal with it. Yeah. Oh, that, that was definitely Endo, by the way. Definitely. You know, sometimes you think, I, I don't want it. Hot potatoes kind of thing. <laughs> the floor is lava vibes. Like, what's going on? Uh, I double BO. Uh, Jones free. What did Blood do all game except missing? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a, it's a bit mad. It's a bit mad. Um, we'll go with three. We'll go with three. We'll go with three in there. Oh, now the front three. <laughs> now the front three. Now the front three. I don't know if you guys just want to group them together or you have separate scores. Um, if so, I'll just start off with Salah. Um, brother, you're you're making it difficult for me to defend you in these spaces online in conversation. Like I I can't really do that now because yeah, you're you're not helping. You're you're really really not helping. Like yeah <laughs> yeah. Uh oh, indeed. Salah free one five two point five. Like you was just offering man nothing though. That's the thing that was annoying me because I was like, forget even miss chances. I'm like, you were just doing nothing, bro. Like you actually did nothing all game. If anything, I felt like he was more annoying than anything. I mean, you created five chances, two shots in the game, one shot on target, big chances miss was one. Nah, man. Like. Salah three, Salah, interesting. Salah two, Nunes two, Diaz four. I kind of agree with that, you know. I actually agree with that because he was less. The thing is, LFC Aaron, I, like I will give like mine's always five is average, of course, and it half ten. But I don't think he was average though. I actually think he was worse than average. That's the maddest thing, and it burns me to say he doesn't have the explosiveness to play out. Yeah, no. But neither did Ronaldo. So maybe we need to start moving him in inside. When Ronaldo lost that pace, like they moved him inside. Two. Sorry, Salah, man. I don't like doing that to you, bro. But, bro, you, you're, you're starting to annoy me because I'm defending you. I'm going into battle like Jon Snow. And these times, you guys are just moving mad. I've got the whole everyone after me. Um, Nunes. Outside of the chances that Nunes missed, did I think he played well? No. He was making runs, though. He was trying to make runs, and people just weren't actually trying to find him. But in general, nah. I don't think Nunes played that well. Um, yeah, that's to, yeah. I think he was a bit better than Salah, though. I do. I would say that's why when he said two, two, four, I was like, yes and no. But I do think he was just a bit better um, than Salah uh, for the amount of goals he scored. Up. Nunez free. Reverend I saying zero. Brian saying zero. Nah, you lot are deep. Nah, he was better than Salah. He was better than Salah. It, it would just be because of the missed chances why we'd be vexed. Why we'd be vexed. Trust me. I, like, I promise you, and this is coming from Salah, one of Salah's biggest fans, I promise you that it was, you know, he was better than Fink. He was better than Fink. Um, duh, 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 duh. Nunez for work great. I'll give him a free. 3.5 actually. Uh Diaz. Diaz, Diaz, Diaz. Ryan saying Jurgen is a legend, but we need a fresh change. Um yeah. Diaz four. Diaz four. Yeah, I think Diaz are four. At times he did look lively. At times. Um no number nine. No, number nine. No nine. Number nine scored your goals, mate. I'm sick of it. No, I hear you. 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 There's a saying in sport, just good enough to get you beat. That's Nunes. That's Nunes. Diaz 2.5. No, I, I thought Nunes was uh, Nunes. I thought Diaz was the best attacker that we did have. I did think he was. 
Diaz five, he was at least as good as McAllister. Yeah. He was trying, though. He was trying. He was trying. He was trying. Nunez is zero. So you look deep, man. Nah, he was better than Salah. He was better than Salah. Um, Diaz. Yeah, it's a tricky one, man. Maybe like a four. Was he worse than average? That's the real question you got to ask. Were they worse than average? Like like the other guys that we've given low scores for? Because if, if they were worse than average, then yeah. Oh, don't worry, RJ. I'll get to clock in a second. Yeah, 4.5. 4.5, I think. Yeah, just below that average mark. The whole forward line was. Um, <clears throat> I can't put up the substitutes and stuff like that, but um, Cody Gapo, Jota, Elliot. Uh, and Trent, oh, and Sabozala as well. Um, I don't know <laughs> to be honest, I, I rarely ever do rate the, the substitutes anyway. But Trent, I would have given you need to stop doing these Hollywood passes, though, my bro. Like, I'm actually getting tired of seeing Hollywood passes, like, it's actually annoying at this stage. Every day, Hollywood pass, Hollywood pass, sometimes just a simple pass will be fine, bro. It's not every day you have to show everybody that you're old, you're the new school David Beckham. Sometimes just simple, simple. You know what I'm trying to say? Small, small. Like you don't, I don't need to see everything like that. It annoys me sometimes with Trent, man. So he did that little, he came on, he did that little shimmy. Everyone got gas. Yeah, we saying what Trent back. And then uh, then you go back to just doing stroppiness. Like it's annoying. Um, so I don't know, four. Um, Zabozalai, four. Um, this running around thing that Klopp's got him doing, yeah. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna kill the man inside. I promise you, you're actually gonna kill the man inside. Uh, Gapo, Gapo was trying to make things happen though. On that left hand side, he was actually trying to make things happen. He looks more comfortable out there on the left, funnily enough. Um, so yeah, uh, six. Um, who else is there? Elliot. Four. I can't, don't even really remember Elliot too tough. Um, yeah, no, nah, I don't really nah. the, the, the performance wasn't noticeable at all. Uh, and who else is there, did I say? Jota, Jota. Oh, Diogo. It's funny, yeah? Do you know what's crazy about the Diogo Jota coming on and missing that uh, missing that chance or the good block that what's-his-name got in? Um, everyone said if Diogo Jota was in the position to score with the chances that we've had, he would score. He got put in that position and... Um, do you watch the game? Uh, he got put in that position and he didn't score. So I found it hilarious at the time because I was like, it's funny. Everyone keeps asking, we need Jota in those positions. He was in that position. He didn't score. Where do we go from here? Do you know what I mean? Where do we go from here? But it is what it is, man. But that's my ratings for the game. Ali at 6.5, Bradley 5.5, and then obviously got taken off. Um, so just for the time that he was on the pitch, uh, Kanate and Van Dyke a three. Absolutely poor. Robertson uh, was really good for Liverpool out there with a seven. Endo, a three. McAllister, a five. Jones, a three as well. Um, Mohamed Salah, you know what, actually? I just realised something. Because <laughs> I couldn't even give Nunes a 3.5 because I don't think he was better than Jones. Uh, Salah, two. <sighs> what can we say? The goals are starting to dry up now. Uh, Nunes, three. Luis Diaz, 4.5. Guys, if you are watching this on the replay, make sure you let me know what your uh, ratings would have been uh, for this game. Oh, Jesus Christ, man. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So, obviously, we're coming to the end now. So, guys, if you've got any questions or anything like that, let me know. And then, um, yeah, we'll, we'll literally head out. But my kind of final thoughts, regardless, is that are we out of the title race? No, I do not think so. I do not think that we are out of the title race. Is it Zaga? Yeah, mods man need to just pattern that one. Man, just need to pattern that one. Um, yeah. Anyways, the um, when it comes to hold on. Yeah, yeah, I just banned him now. Anyways, 
yeah, when it comes to the title race and stuff like that, do I think it's over? No, it can't be when you're only two points behind. So it's difficult to say um, it's over. And I think it'll be silly to for the guys to even think that it's self, themselves. So, yeah, I think, yeah, Liverpool are still in the title race. But uh, again, I don't think we'll win it anyway. I just think we're in the race. Um, I think Manchester City have always been the team that I've looked at. Just, yeah, Manchester City, man. Uh, and I think you always get to this kind of point in a season where eventually um, these kind of things happen. And I just think that I don't have the same feeling that I did in 1819 or 1920. More so 1819, where I was genuinely disappointed we didn't win the league because I was like, rah. Like, I felt like we were good enough to do so. Another thing I will say that annoys me is that I'm tired of people saying at the beginning of the season, you didn't think Liverpool would win the league. I, that plays zero bearing on what we see today. It has literally no bearing. It doesn't matter where you think or where you thought Liverpool would be at the beginning of the season. So just because at the beginning of the season, most of us would have sat there and said, no, definitely not a title challenge and rare tear tear. What does that have to do with today? It has zero to do with today. Because if that is true, Arsenal did not bottle the league last season. Impossible. Like it would actually be impossible to say they bottled it because nobody had them winning the league last season. You didn't even have them title challenging last season. So how can they bottle something that you didn't expect them to be anyway? So what did they bottle? Because you didn't expect them to do it. But guess what? We don't think that. We all say that they bottled it. So guess what? It doesn't matter where you thought Liverpool would be at the beginning of the season. Ah, oh, but because they're it doesn't literally expectations change because they have to change midway through a season. If you're doing better than expected or worse than expected, things change. Last season, are we saying that we sat there and thought, yeah, we're going to win the league? What, when we were sitting eighth and ninth? That, like, do the expectations stay the same? That, like, the two don't make sense. So when people say that, I'm like, that doesn't make sense to your art, like, to what you're trying to get at. Because the reality is, I don't care where I thought Liverpool would be. Right now, you are here. So the expectation now is that, not that I still don't expect them, I never had an expectation to win, but just that people who do at this current stage in time, you can't now sit there and say, yeah, it doesn't really matter, man, because I had them fourth anyway at the beginning of the season. What the hell does that mean? If Luton was sitting fifth, do you think that they would still have the expectation of, oh, let's just stay in the league? No, they'd try to be going for Europe. They'd be like, yeah, you know what, at this at this point in the season, we might actually be able to get Europe. It'd be like, your expectations, your expectations will always change, man. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So, yeah, that, that's that's one thing on that. It's been annoying me recently because I hear too many people say about... I see, I hear pundits do it, content creators, always like, yeah, but where did you think Liverpool would be? Like, it doesn't matter where I thought they would be. It matters where I think they are, like, where they are now and what I think towards now and the end of the season. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So, that's that in itself. That's that. Um, we got our next game against Atalanta. I think we'll win that game. <laughs> then again, I thought we'd beat Palace and Atalanta. So maybe I should just keep quiet on the results for a little while. But I think Liverpool will win that game. I don't think that they will go through, though. So that's where I'll leave that. And then I'll save it for the match preview. We'll run through the last bit of the comments. And then we will head out of here. Big up, K-Mac in the building. I just see a comment there. Big up, big up, big up. Here we go. Unpopular opinion. So Bozalai wasn't too bad when he came on. Uh, yeah, maybe like a four. I'll be honest, like a four. Didn't really help towards anything, I'll, I'll be real. Uh, realism. Remember when you and Jerry said if he doesn't win the UCL in that quad chasing season and he should go and the fans called you guys bottom reds? We agreed then Klopp had gone stale. Now what is Klopp? This is the this is this is the kind of problem. The only you know what's even mad about that, RJ? What I find even more annoying is that more people keep now telling me that they think that they think that now. And I'm just like, but he's always been like this though. I don't even feel like Klopp's even changed that much since when we didn't win the Champions League to now. I feel like it's kind of been the exact same. <laughs> Did you get what I'm trying to say? Like that's the bit that baffles me the most. Hence why I'm just like, hmm, I just find those kind of little things a little bit more annoying because I was getting attacked. Do you know what I mean? I was getting, I was getting personally, verbally. Do you know what I mean? I was getting attacked online and all sorts. But now everyone wants to be singing from the same hymn sheet. I'm like, nah, man, this is a solo. This is a solo. I'm gonna be Beyonce and Destiny's Child. I'm leaving everyone because I'm not trying to hear and be sitting here and 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 doing all of that. Because the reality is, if you thought he was this, then he's that. Simple as. Like, do you get what I'm trying to say? 
Kula, Kula B. Nunez is not a striker in a clock system. Him and Zabozo were bought for their running power and to be developed over time to improve their output. I hear it. I hear it. Uh, K-Mac, I thought Diaz was okay. No idea why he was taken off. He was all right, but maybe just something different. I'll be honest, because I thought Gappa was better than was actually better than Diaz, to be honest, in terms of what he was offering in the game. It was just that something different. Maybe that's just all he wanted it for. Uh, psychedelic, if Liverpool are a small club, what does that make Chelsea? Yeah, yeah for real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we ain't going to try and try and do all of that. Uh, I'd sell Salah. <laughs> I'd sell Salah in the summer instantly if a good offer came in. Yeah, see, look, this negativity, Ray, and that you're, you, you know what I mean? It's, it's a bit mad. It's a bit mad. Hey, Mac, are you still crop out? <laughs> <laughs> Ali Nuss, all the best, G. Hope for a better game. It's not over yet. We still have a chance. Agreed. Agreed. Agreed, agreed, agreed. Uh, G, why are you being so toxic, positive? Of course we are out of the title race. I'm not being toxic, positive at all. I'm just telling you. I don't think we're going to win it. I'm just saying we are in a race, though. It will be silly to say that you're not in a race. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Like, we, bro, we're two points behind. Like, you can't look at it any other way. Are Arsenal out of it, too? Like, they lost. They're on the same points as us. Like, we're all still in this race, but... I don't think we will win it, though. That's the only difference. Yeah, Saka did it sound like someone salty that we stole. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sound like he was a little piece salty. How many games left do we win? I say three. Um, well, to be fair, I thought we'd actually uh, drop points to West Ham, actually. Um, that's where I thought the points would be dropped. Remember, I think the last one of the last streams I did, I spoke about... Um, like where I think the points are going to be and what the points are going to be come the end of the season, my points dropped was actually against West Ham. Uh, so that's where I thought we'd we drop points. Whether it was a loss or a defeat, I think I said draw. Or maybe I even said defeat potentially. But yeah, now it's come against Crystal Palace. I don't even know now. Um, I think we'll drop points one more time between now and the end of the season. At least one more and we'll win the rest of the other games. I don't know who it will be against though. Uh, Ali Nuss, Klopp never played with striker. Our strikers are box to box. Yep, I hear it. Ryan saying that it's over. Hey man, if you feel it's over, it's over. Social joins. Has City ever won the league? Has City ever won the league? Leading seems to always come from behind. That's very true. I, I think they have the once, maybe like once or twice, bro. They, I mean, they're on for a four peat right now. They must have done it at least once um, during that period of time. But they they are so good from coming from behind, like. They usually do start very crap, though, in seasons. That's something that I've noticed about them. Why? I don't know. Whether it's just hangover from the previous season of doing so well and the kind of energy that they put in, because they seem to put in more energy towards the end of the season than they do at the beginning. Always seeming to have injuries, always problems at the beginning of a season. Don't know if it's just tinkering from Pep Guardiola or whatever it is, but they just always seem to have an issue come the beginning of a season, but then come the end, they're the best team, like literally every time. Uh, Andrew, our performances tell me it's over. I hear it. I do hear it. Um, Reverend, I agree, G. I hate that cop out. Yeah, 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 it bugs me. It bugs me. Expectations can change during the season. It, but this is the point. That's the point. Now, manager expectations, that's different because we're not talking about a manager who's only been here for two seconds kind of thing. We're talking about a guy who's been here for a very long time and is the way he is, whereas the team can change throughout a season in terms of, you know, what their expectations for a season actually is. Do you get what I'm saying? So, Revenite, well, we didn't expect to be there. That sounds like excuses Arsenal fans used last year. That, that's what I'm saying. That's this is, this is why I get so touchy and mad about it, because it's like you're just using that as some type of cop-out. If the, if the team doesn't win the league, you know, I didn't even think they were going to, what do you mean? Bro, you, of course you thought we was going to win the league. Or you at least thought we was in a race. Do you, do you get what I'm trying to, when we were top and winning games, I didn't hear people saying, oh, I don't think we're going to win it. We were saying that we, we thought we'd win the Premier League because we were top and we were winning games. So why does that now change? Like, do you, do you get what I'm trying to, like, or sorry, not even why does it change? It can change as the season goes on, but let's stop acting like the beginning of the season was that's where your expectations should just lie. It's like, well, that don't make no sense. Like, as the season has gone on, it's going to change. Do you get what I'm trying to say? We got ourselves in a good position and we bottled it. I wouldn't say the word bottled it. That's what Arsenal did, in my opinion. I, I don't feel like bottle is the right term for what Liverpool have been doing or have done this season. Um, 
Reverend, I will never use that same uh, rhetoric. Expectation to change, hundred percent, man. Uh, big up, K. Big up, K, man. Good afternoon. Yes, yeah, twelve o'clock now. Big up afternoon. Uh, K Mac. All our extra changes have changed, but what we have done is what we always do under clock. Fail to deceive. Bit mad. Bit mad. Big up YG Jazz. Just got to subscribe. Big up, man. No, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that every time. LFC Aaron X that changes change 100 percent Ali Nuss. We need changes in the summer. Players and management. I don't want to see bench players join over and over again. We need big players for big games, players who can play under pressure and enjoy it. Uh big up Warrior J in the damn building. Just subscribe now. Big up, man. Big up. I will be on over potentially with Flawless this Friday. If he's got something um, coming, I should actually have Flawless on the channel. Hopefully he's available uh, this week, this Friday, I believe. Um, we should be doing a show on the Premier League team of the season, young player of the season um, and player of the season. So that, that should be coming on Friday. Hopefully if Flawless is free and a, and a couple others, if they are free, uh, we'll be doing that show on Friday evening. So make sure you guys are staying tuned and keep your notification bells on. Um, Kula saying, I think City will drop points if they go through UCL semi. Unfortunately, I don't think Arsenal or Liverpool will keep pace to take advantage. They don't have the mentality or the fight. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, the excuse making is irritating. 100%. 100%. It bugs the living daylights out of me. Uh, Jerry, if we don't get Amarim, who would you want? Who's on people's shortlist? <laughs> Jerry, I'm saying. You see that deserve he talk? <laughs> You see that deserve chitter chatter. You guys don't want to hear it, but I'm telling you, he's there anyway. That's what I'm saying. He's there. He's there. I heard someone said about the the Nico, what's his name? Kovac, whoever it is. Um, is it a former Bayern Munich manager? Yeah, he's obviously apparently someone that we're looking at potentially. Um, so maybe I'll do a video on him, maybe take a look at him, what he's about, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But yeah, it's funny. It's this manager um conversation, it comes like transfer. Like, when you're trying to look at a player, oh, how does this player fit into our team? We're doing that with managers now. That's so mad that Liverpool are kind of in this position, but it is what it is. Uh, gee, I think City will drop points in a game, but us and Arsenal are bottle jobs, so we'll drop more. Jesus Christ. You lot are... You lot are deep. You lot are deep. Jerry James, ideally Inzaghi. I don't know if Inzaghi would leave into Milan, though, but he seems like a good choice. I can't see why. Uh, we're me saying this, but I still think we are getting Alonso. Hey, listen, man, if you've got that belief and you think we're getting Alonso, cool. You're getting the feeling Klopp leaving at the end of the season is the right time now. Yeah, but I mean, I kind of ordered him to go from time ago. Uh, LFC Aaron Edwards will sell Salah, in my opinion. Uh, Kula saying the Stuttgart manager. Listen, man, I, I feel like Liverpool, the type of club that will just get someone completely left field. And we're all going to be sitting there saying, what? <laughs> uh, Ali Nuss, come on, G. Salah needs to go so bad we didn't sell him. 250 mil. Valverde was 100 at the time. Listen, I listen. as much as Salah's my guy, of course, if 200 mil was on the table, you should have just taken it when you had the opportunity because I don't think you... I don't know if you'll still get that same 200 million, um, if I'm being honest. Uh, Man City won't drop another point. Uh, we are in the race, which we will not win, unfortunately, from Sal. K-Max saying, let's be real. Be, it will be an LFC thing to win the Europa and lose the league by one point. Nah. <laughs> yeah. See that one point stuff. We're gonna have to start calling it one point clock. One PK. Uh Andy uh, is saying two place get community shield. Second place get community shield. Um LFC Aaron, I think Fulham take points off us next week. Ends kept saying that. Well, no, sorry, let me not paraphrase that. Ends kept talking about the Fulham game though, and it kept making me think about that. Like, it's been in the back of my mind for a little while now. Uh Kula, Jose for one year, then Alonso. I'll take Jose. I don't know what's wrong with Jose. Alinus bring Michel from Girona. I think City have got their eyes on him, if I'm being honest. Uh, Psychedelic, do you think City will win versus Spurs? It's been a bogey team for them. They drew at the Etihad, didn't they? But they beat them in one of the cup competitions, right? I think they'll win. I think when the when it's time, they just win. They, they All that bogey stuff, yeah, they leave that for the middle of the season. Uh, K-Max, City have muscle memory in finishing off seasons. The big players step up to get them over the line. And you've got the best manager in the world. That kind of helps too as well. But I agree with what you're saying. LFC, Aaron, us and Arsenal bottling it yesterday. Nothing to do with City. We failed ourselves 100%. And nothing to do with City. City just were playing Luton and they just did their job. That's it. Just did their job. 
Uh, I've got a bet on that City drop points at Forest and Fulham or Spurs. Okay, fair, fair. Let's hope that happens. I hope they do. Angel, they lead in the, the they lead in the domestic double season. We chased them from January. Sixteen wins, three draws, and we lost by a point. Maybe you should have told, turned one of those draws into wins. Do you know what I mean? It's just it's unfortunate. It's one of those things. City have good players on every uh, in every position. Maybe only Ali to save the boat. Let's face it. I mean. You cannot compare Endo with Rodri or Zobozolai with De Bruyne. We need a few big players in our team. We do. We do. Um, RJ, we have dropped more points in the last five games than we put on the board. Drop seven, gain six out of 15. Now, things like that are things that we've got to worry about. And also, this. Though, let me even get the picture back up again. Let's get the picture back up again. Because things like this are why Liverpool will always annoy me. Well, especially this season, anyway. <clears throat> like, come on. This irritates me more than anything. But I think it's because of how I like my football to be played. And I don't, and I, I don't sense control with Liverpool at all. I, like, I don't see ever control with Liverpool. I don't feel like we are in control of the situation. But this bugs the living daylights out of me. You twenty one times, bro. There's no way anybody. I don't care what tactical that you guys want to find me on Twitter. All them clowns will then try and spin this in some crazy way where it's like. Yeah, but you know the game state and potentially, you know, our field tilt in this kind of get shut up, shut up, because I'm tired of hearing from you guys. They are starting to annoy me because I don't mind doing tactics. And you guys know I love to analyze in the game and trying to go into depth about certain things. I love all of that kind of conversation. But sometimes you go over these tacticals, the Liverpool ones as well, and the Arsenal ones, they go overboard. Like, they go way overboard. And they, like I said, yeah, maybe the field tilt in this game was good. Mm, different game state. Shut up, bro. Shut up. How about deal with this? Talk, talk to me about this. Are you going to tell me? It's because of the high line and we've got player one in the wrong position. Now, if player four would just move subsequently to his left-hand side, then potentially we would be in a better position when we do lose the ball. Now, if the goalkeeper would just move three degrees to his right, yeah, right. I'm not trying to hear any of that stuff, bro. This 21 games that you're behind in, yeah, that's just the crux of it. That's just the crux of it. Ain't none of us being paid to, to even deal with this anyway. So don't try to talk to me about your field tilts and et cetera, et cetera. But that's what annoys me the most about Liverpool, if I'm being honest. Uh, Warrior J saying, as a neutral, I saw your game yesterday, but Lord, you guys missing those chances are terrible. Yeah, 100%. 100%. I got no problems with getting Klopp, unlike... I got no problems with getting Klopp, unlike others. I hear it. Uh, YG Jez, every time when we play City at our ground, it's usually when it doesn't matter to their league season. Real talk. Uh, Andy saying, who will get Community Shield in first place? Versus second base, Arsenal, Manchester City, Liverpool. Very good question, actually. I don't know how that works then. Because if we... If City were to win the FA Cup... Yeah, we Arsenal. Or whoever finishes second, right? Yeah, yeah whoever finishes second. It'd be very, very... Yeah, I think it'll be that. Uh, G, I have a question for you. Who's your front three you want to see in the upcoming games? Oh. Um... You, you, I'll be real. I actually wanted to try and see Zabozalai on the left, Elliot on the right, and then play Gapo in the middle. You'll lose out on pace, but you'll be able to get connection with the midfield. I just wanted to see something different. So I didn't really care about the rest. Diaz, Nunes, Salah can all be dropped for like a, it was really just the rest. I said, let's just see something different. Like Zabozalai, I feel like he could play left wing. And I feel like maybe with his crossing ability, having him cutting in and crossing the ball into the box for someone to be running into, the connections that you can get with McAllister, making those runs, late runs, especially into the box. I feel like the connection you'll have, the the threat that you'll have, I can't see why not. But oh, crap, I forgot Jota's back. So maybe swap Gapo with Jota and then put Jota in the middle. But yeah, 
that that that's the kind of um front three I would I would just consider just trying something like just right now you're doing the same things and expecting a different result. You know what I mean? Definition of of of, of insanity. Just try something different. Maybe Zabozla will get a different tune out of him out there on the left hand left hand side, and I think Elliot on the right hand side. I just think that he would prefer to potentially play in that position um, where he can link up. And then if you then want your Trent or your Bradleys on the right-hand side bombing, he can cut inside and then they can do that role. So that's why I feel potentially that. But that's just something different. I know people are going to be like, right, that's crazy. Why would you do that? But it's just something different. I'm tired of seeing the same crap. Uh, this is because of chaos. This is what Klopp has turned us into. Chaos does not work, 100%. It goes 90%, 95% of the guys that don't ball never made squad. I, bro, I promise you, I promise you these tacticals never played football, but then they'll flip it and say, you don't need to have played football to have understood the game. I will say that you had to have needed to play football to have played the game. And to even, to, to be able to talk about it in some way, you literally have, I, I'm not talking about playing World Cup finals because I ain't played no World Cup final. And I know Jose Mourinho ain't played no World Cup final, but pff, look how great he is. Like you've got to play the game at some some level, like just to be able to talk on it. Uh Kula saying Diaz, Gapo, Jota, Zabozo, right wing, Elliot, right mid. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. Just try something different. It's something. Uh, Mr. Tibbs, uh, Liverpool constantly going behind spells disaster in a title chase running. Facts. Absolute facts. Uh Gapo Jota Salah. Yeah, fair enough. Messi Suarez Mbappe. That's what I want to see. Next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pff, why not? Why not? Uh, Gapo Jota Dom. For me, Zabozalai doesn't start for the rest of the season. I hear it. I do hear it. And I do hear this too. Dan's a super sub. At the end of this video, guys, um, this will redirect you to that video tomorrow. Like I said, we will be talking about Dan's. Um, we'll be talking about Bytechic. And I cannot remember the third thing, but there was those two things most definitely. We're talking about Dan's. Should he get more opportunities in the first team by Tetchich? Where does he fit into this into this team? Does he come back in at any point? When do you want to see him under a new manager? What kind of positions do you guys see someone like by Tetchich in? And then obviously we'll talk about a lot more. Uh, that'll be ten thirty again tomorrow morning. So make sure you guys stay tuned. Uh, Elliot sorts for Dom when he's tired, and Dan's for Jota. This kid needs a shot. He looks like a natural finisher. Agreed. All right, guys, that is the end of the match reaction. I love chopping it up with you guys early morning vibes. We are back, as I said, tomorrow morning uh, for 10.30. But before that, at 10 o'clock this evening, I will be dropping my football manager. I think it's that's like episode four now. Episode four or episode five? I think it's four. But the next episode of my football manager save uh, will be dropping this evening at 10 p.m. So if you guys are bored, you're just chilling, play in the background, whatever. Just make sure whatever you do, even if you do not watch all of it, just smash the like. As soon as you see it, just hit the like button, please. That's all I ask of everybody. I hope, of course, everybody's enjoyed this morning's show and I hope everybody has a great rest of the day. Look, Liverpool lost the game. Are we out of the title race? I don't know. It's a bit of a tricky one. I'm still undecided as to what I think in regards to it, but we are here. We've got to just deal with it. We've got Atalanta next. Let's wait and see. Do I see Liverpool winning a trophy come the end of the season? Um, 